Hello, this is Kevin Winning. I'm starting here on uh, one of the steps that I had to take when I first started getting serious about my photography. Uh, the big problem that I had to solve was uh, the fact that everything that I had taken and edited and shared so far was out across social media. And that was the only thing that I, I was doing when I first started taking pictures. Uh, mostly I would take pictures, of course, with my phone, or I would take them with a camera and transfer them to a phone or an iPad. And a lot of these new cameras, uh, of course, the Sony A series, you can transfer straight to uh, a phone or a mobile device, which is part of the beauty of it, so you can edit and share immediately. However, uh, the problem that I was having was I would edit and uh, place those pictures out on social media or into a mobile uh, backup service like Dropbox or Google Drive or Amazon Photos, and and that was it. I I hadn't really thought through what happened with those photos and what was the long-term life of those photos. So uh, in a year or two or three years, if I needed to go print a photo, uh, go find it because somebody wanted to purchase it or use it for some reason, I had no idea where they were or how to find them. And uh, a lot of times I didn't even have the original photo itself. So I've since solved that in my workflow, but if you haven't solved that problem, the problem that I had was uh, here is my Dropbox camera uploads folder. Some of my photos live there. These are from a uh, trip that I took to Ecuador. And uh, let's see, this one in particular, uh, I did a quick edit on my iPhone. I shared it, some people liked it, but I had no, uh, I had no backed up version of this, of this photo. So I had to go find that. Uh, I also have things up on my Google Drive. This is a folder that I shared with a bunch of folks that I took a trip to uh, to Ghana with. And the only place that I had shared these particular edits was on my Google Drive folder. I hadn't backed them up anywhere. Uh, same thing happened to me with a lot of the photos that I've been taking on my Instagram. This is in my uh, Apple photo photos albums. And uh, this is the only place that they lived. So, uh, <laughs> That's a whole different ball of wax, transferring from iPhoto to photos. Uh, and Google does the same thing a lot of times. They'll change their folder structure for albums. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little off topic here. So the, uh, the quick problem that we wanna solve is how do you go find everything and get it onto a local drive? So to start with, I've got, uh, this is my downloads folder where everything is gonna come into. And then for transferring them into my workflow. I've got these different folders that I've created and everything comes into an inbound from external sources. Makes pretty good sense, right? So I go look there when I want to transfer anything into long-term backups or uh, import it into, I use Lightroom libraries uh, for, for working on all of my photos. So let's run through these steps real quick in my Dropbox camera uploads folder. I'm just going to control Alt, control A, select everything. Uh, command A on a Mac, and I'm just going to copy all of these over into, uh, let's see here. Actually, I didn't create an inbound for my Dropbox. Yes, I did. Dropbox camera uploads right there. Grab everything, and these are going to download pretty quickly. Dropbox will make for a lot of things, primarily because all of those images are mirrored on my local computer. Uh, we won't get into a, a review of all of the backup services today. That's for another session. But uh, this is the first problem I had to solve because I just didn't know where these photos lived and you want to control all of your media. If you're going to be a serious photographer, uh, if you're going to even share things with family and friends, you want them on a, on a drive where you know where they are. You don't have to go search for them every time or you don't have to say, uh, yeah, I think that's on my Facebook. Go fetch yourself a photo from there. Uh, you want to control all of your media. Uh, Google makes this pretty easy. Uh, they do change things a lot, but uh, right now it's pretty simple. If you're in an album, you can download all. I've even done this with, with family and friends. They can go download all directly from an album that I have up online. So I do back up a lot of things on Google Photos because it's easy for other people to access it from there. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly download all. You're gonna see that download here. That to download. I've started using Picasa, again, I used to use it in my workflow and uh, they like to make changes a lot. So it got really confusing. I didn't know where my photos were. I had a lot of duplicates. I just spent too much time dealing with the software and not enough time working on my pictures, which really irritated me. Uh, so I, I've just started using it again because it's a great way to get things onto uh, Google Drive or onto your Google Photos so other people can access them. Uh, so here's Dropbox camera uploads. I could fetch them from there. Uh, also, why I don't use this, if I'm going to import from Google Photos, 
here's the dialogue that it gives me. It gives me, these are my albums, but I have no idea what's in them. I would have to guess at what did I upload on that date, or I'd have to go into my into my web browser to find it anyway. So I find that it's just easier to download straight from the web browser. Makes sense, right? Okay, back to downloads folder. There's my Google Photos zip file that I just downloaded. I'm gonna open it in place and then quickly take a scroll through that folder, make sure that those are the actual images that I want. Yep, looks like it grabbed everything. Okay, I'm gonna take this over into my Google Drive downloads to do rename it real quick so I know when this uh, when this was uh, photos this is the let's just say gonna if I can type <laughs> on a project cure trip so I know when I import that into my workflow where did those photos come from right okay one other thing that I'm gonna touch on is I do back up sometimes to my Amazon cloud drive uh, this happens to be a batch of photos that were on an old phone uh, that I had. Uh, I, I don't know why I had never backed them up, but the only place that they lived was on this old device. Uh, so right now, uh, Amazon as well makes it fairly easy to download one of these folders. Just select all, click on your download. I previously downloaded this one because it's uh, it's rather large. Let's go back to the downloads folder real quick. Assume that all of these photos from my uh, backed up files on Amazon Cloud have downloaded right here. Did the same thing as with the Google Photos. Scroll through and check real quick. Yep, those are the photos that I needed to back up. And same thing, we're going to put them in my inbound from external sources, Amazon Drive downloads. And same thing here, Amazon Cloud Drive download, Caledonia. That's just what my iPhone happens to be named. I like to give my devices fun names. Easier for me to recognize them. All right, next place. If you absolutely have to, and you cannot find a version on any of your backup sources, like Google Drive, Amazon Photos, uh, you can go get them from your social media. Uh, <laughs> this is my Facebook page, which I don't really do anything with, but I have one photo up here that I uploaded for, uh, for demonstration purposes. So if you have only shared them on Facebook, you can go to the photo and go to options, download that photo. Now you can download a zip of all of your files that are on, on Facebook. If you do, they're going to be much smaller uh, files. If you download each one individually, Okay, that one's done. I'm gonna go grab that in the downloads folder. You're going to see 230K. It's still not the full size image. I wanna see how big this image is. And you can do this on uh, Windows as well. Right click, I'm gonna get info. And I can see right here, 2048 by 1462. It's definitely not the full size image. Uh, fortunately, this particular photo I do have backed up. I've got it somewhere else. Uh, but if you absolutely as a last resort have to find a photo, that's the best way to do it and do it individually from Facebook rather than downloading the uh, downloading a zip of all your photos because that will give you the highest resolution photo that Facebook has on file. Uh, Instagram, I've not found a good way to do this. If, you're, if you need to go in and fetch your Instagram photos, basically the only way to do this is to do a screen capture or right click and save as. Uh, I haven't found any other way to do that somebody may know the answer, but uh, that is kind of a last resort because that's going to be a very small, low quality image and you definitely don't wanna be doing that. Uh, okay, the other problem that I had to solve was uh, taking all of the photos that are being shared on my mobile devices. Uh, and this is for me how I, how I run my workflow now. So if these photos have come in from, I've done them on Instagram, Uh, if you use Apple Photos, and I highly recommend it, uh, it's the, the best way for me to share because I use mostly iOS devices. I've got Apple TVs in the house. Uh, the family uses iPads, so it's easy to share photos with other people that are on iOS, mostly being family and friends. Uh, so I have these photos here that I want to back up into Apple Photos. Select all, drag, and drop them and it's gonna copy them all straight away. And I'm gonna check real quickly here, the size of these photos. 
Some of them definitely are smaller. Uh, looks like most of them have been made smaller for my mobile devices. That one's obviously a pretty big file, pretty big file, probably not the original, but maybe it is. Uh, so if you have to, you can usually get them from your Apple Photos. Uh, here's another example. This is a shared folder that somebody else sent to me uh, that they also use iOS devices. So they are going to, uh, let me see here, what I need to do real quick is create myself another folder. This is Ethan Vienna uh, 2015. And the reason that I want to back these up is I need to go through these with Ethan. And work on some of these edits with him. So Ethan is a, a young friend who wants me to uh, start helping him with his photography. Uh, obviously some of these are just family photos. Some of these are fun photos that he took when he was in Vienna. Okay, there's a pretty cool image. We can work with that. So I'm going to do a, a editing session with Ethan. So this is partially why I like photos as well. I know you can do this with Google uh, shared albums. I'm just not that familiar with it, but uh, the idea here is to take anything that lives online and in cloud storage and put it onto your local computer for a lot of various reasons. But the, the primary reason is you want to own all of your media. And I'm not saying Google's going to go out of business, but I have had it happen with other, other backup online services where they just go out of business. Usually they send you an email first so you can fetch everything. Uh, you're not losing anything, but, uh, I personally am paranoid about it now, so I like to have everything local on my machine. I control all of my pictures. And just consider that if you are using anybody else's service, it's not on your computer. Those things are out in the cloud. If they get hacked, your your photos could be stolen. Okay, one other thing that I had a problem with was uh, a lot of photos that lived on an old computer, and I never backed them up. So when that computer died, I had to first restore the hard drive and then go find all of my pictures. Now, all you're going to need for this is to uh, get access to your old computer and then something as simple as an external hard drive. This is a little one terabyte drive that I picked up for $50. Storage is pretty cheap now. Uh, I'm not going to trust my long-term backups to a little $50 drive, but uh, for moving files around, it works great. I also take this particular drive uh, when I travel, because it's small and light, uh, and I can back up everything onto uh, onto an external drive plus my my memory cards when I'm traveling. Uh, so what I did was I had to go find everything on an old computer, and everything here all the way back to 2005, uh, plus some things that I used to think were awesome pictures, <laughs> they all lived on a computer that I never I, or I didn't have access to anymore because the hard drive had gone down. So I simply copied everything off onto this little mobile drive, moved them over into my long-term storage. So the goal that I, I was trying to get to and that I just accomplished was fetching those photos from all across the web and placing them into one place so that I can work on them. Uh, and I, I know exactly where to go for everything. So this right now is my Passport Studio. Uh, that is another external drive that I use. And I didn't get to name this a cool name because it already had a bunch of stuff on there before I started my naming structure. So I had to leave that one alone. And then this is my long-term backups. Uh, this is a network attached storage. And in my photography folder, I'm gonna have everything that's related to my photography. These are long-term backups in addition to my Amazon online cloud storage. Uh, so. I take everything that I'm working on here, back it up here on a regular basis. It looks like I'm a little bit behind. The last full backup that I did of my Lightroom was November 13th. Same for my catalogs. Uh, I, but now I'm ready to start working with all of my photos and I place them in different libraries here in my working folder. And everything that used to live out across the web is now in one place. I'm ready to go in and figure out how am I gonna tackle editing all of my photos. All right. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you all later.